I keep thinking that maybe they're living on another timeline or something that we don't that we don't know about. They're like in the, like the sideways universe and lost or something. But um, but here's my question for you, Michael Steele. Like you're a, being as someone who understood the Republican Party uh, back when you were chairman of it. Um, you, you know what Wisconsin's like, right? So here's the governor, Tony Evers, who Democrat. Um, there, I'm going to read a little New York Times, and then I'm going to play a little Tony Evers sound. Here's what the governor uh, the situation uh, is with this sitting governor. The Times says the winner of the primary will face Governor Tony Evers, a Democrat who's voted who's vetoed. More than a dozen, a dozen voting bills passed by the Republican-controlled legislature in the last two years. Because of the GOP's large majorities in the gerrymandered legislature, a Republican governor would be given a wide berth to change how the state casts and counts votes in the 2024 presidential election. Here's Evers on July 13th uh, talking about the stakes here. Let's hear, let's listen to that. I believe they will continue doing this until Donald Trump is uh, six feet under. If a Republican ends up as governor of the state of Wisconsin, we will see elections change to the point where the legislature makes the final decision. And that should scare the living crap out of everybody. So, Michael, like in the old days, and I mean even 20, 2016, people forget Donald Trump didn't win the Republican primary in Wisconsin in 2016. Ted Cruz did. And you would go up there and you talk to Republicans of the Charlie Sykes ilk, and they'd be like, no, man, Wisconsin Republicans are a much more like center. This is, not the, this is not the crazy wing of the party. And now you're seeing this kind of behavior, and you're seeing the, these, these, these efforts again and again, what Tony Evers is talking about. Like, I, you know, people used to ask, what's the matter with Kansas? I want to know, what's the, what's the matter with the Badger State? What's going on in Wisconsin that the party has gone so far off the rails? And what does, it hold, what does that portend for 2024? Well, it, it is not just Wisconsin, but it's it's pretty much uh, an infection that is throughout the country. Um, what it what em, what it where it emanates from is this idea of how we gain power. This isn't about governing. This is not that there are no le real legitimate concerns here. When you ask these folks, well, okay, show me where there was the fraud, or or when people say, well, we want to address you know irregularities in the election. Okay, which irregularities specifically are you referring to that occurred in your state or in that county or in that particular jurisdiction? They can't point to those. Um, and, and, and when they do, ironically enough, the person who's in violation of the law is a Trump Republican. And so the reality of it is you have this narrative that has, a, has formed and been created by a, a rancorous, irritated, irritable um, base that, that wants to own the libs. And the leadership doesn't have the moxie to stand in the breach and say, that's not how we govern. I mean, we can do politics that way, but that's not how we're going to govern. So the governor, uh, Evers, is absolutely right. If given the power, what you're going to look at is changing the rules of the game so that they can keep that power, not so they can govern better. And that's what voters need to, how voters, I think, need to distinguish what these candidates are saying they're going to do, um, because they cannot change the law. They certainly can't change the Constitution. But if given the power, they can at least change the law on their way to ultimately trying to change the Constitution, whether of their state or of the country. So, Ash, I want to drill down a little bit more on this race between Clayfish and, uh, and Michaels. Um, you've got a situation, your paper uh, tries to it does some work on this here. I'll, I'll read from it here. The headline is Trump's pick for Wisconsin governor won't weigh in on the 2020 results. This is Donald Trump's person, uh, is Michaels. Uh, as he has throughout this campaign, Michaels avoided addressing whether he would certify the 2024 presidential election or attempt the legally impossible feat of reversing Trump's 2020 loss. Michaels' profile uh, contrasts with those of other gubernatorial hopefuls that Trump has endorsed. We talked about uh, a little bit about Clayfish, who's going to get labeled a, a, a rhino um, uh, because she's trying to not go, want to touch this with a barge pole. Uh, but, but Michaels is not like as far off the deep end on this as Trump back candidates in places like Arizona and Pennsylvania, which we'll talk about in a second. Just kind of give me a sense of what of, of the way in which this dynamic of the Republican civil war within this in this primary is maybe a little bit different than it is in some of the other states that we have looked carefully at in the past few weeks and will in the weeks ahead. Well, it's twofold. There's a third candidate in this race who is sort of even more conspiracy theorist um, who former President Trump did not endorse. So that's notable in and of itself, because one thing motivating Trump, of course, is that 
in addition to wanting Republicans to jump through hoops uh, to justify his litmus test, he also wants to win and he wants to be viewed as a kingmaker. And if you do a bunch of just utterly impractical conspiracy theorist endorsements, that's not the best method uh, for winning, not even always in all of these Republican primaries. And secondly, what you're seeing in Wisconsin, which is different from some states, is there is at least a private and increasingly public acknowledgement among Republicans that, that even if they sort of have to pay lip service to you know what they would do about an election nearly two years ago, that this is not what voters want to hear. They prefer issues looking forward. They you know, in the same way that President Biden is now struggling with, for instance, uh, strengthening NATO and the transatlantic alliance, all sort of big victories when voters care about gas prices, Republican voters also care about gas prices perhaps a bit more than they care about, uh, again, an election two years ago that they can't change. So that is what you're seeing in this race. You're seeing a, a Republican candidate in Michaels who obviously wanted Trump's endorsement where it is beneficial. Um, but but also understands the practical reality of, of winning, uh, first of all, a primary and then potentially having to win a, a general where this is even less popular. Neil, um, you mentioned the, the ruling by the Wisconsin Supreme Court uh, that said that the, the way basically the election was conducted in 2020 was 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 kosher. It's also the, and, and mentioned how conservative they are. Uh, they also that's in that I think in that same ruling, they, they had some things to say about how drop boxes work that have uh, going forward effects in terms of both this primary and other elections in the future. Why don't you talk a little bit about that and how the court, the way in which the court's kind of getting into dipping into the question of election administration uh, could change uh, significantly how the elections are run in Wisconsin going forward. Yeah, so the, I mean, the Wisconsin Supreme Court did, you know, say that these drop boxes uh, when they were used during the pandemic were problematic. The remedy, of course, was not to just disenfranchise and toss out all of those votes. Um, but that is an illustration of these kind of, you know, some conservative state Supreme Courts wanting to, you know, to police and prevent people from voting, um, you know, whether during the pandemic or otherwise, this is going to raise its head, John, very much in this North Carolina case. It's my case, so I just want to disclose that now. The Supreme Court's going to be hearing in December, which asks the question, can state courts have any role to play in federal elections or not? Uh, the Republican Party over many years has been investing in state legislative control to the point of cutting out state courts or trying to cut out state courts from elections altogether. And if they succeed in that, it'll just be state legislatures and no one else that will be able to uh, control the rules for elections, throw out ballots for whatever reason, provide remedies um, and the like.